Hi everyone, Donna McElvaney here, and today, as promised in my last video, I am going to do um, another Mexicana and um, plan pulling. And in this one, I am going to do instead of the modified puff, which is what I just completed in my last video. I am going to do the non-modified puff version. In the non-modified puff version, um, basically what I do there is um, my turning chains do not count as a stitch. Um, there are several different ways that you can do plant pulling. And one of them is in whenever you turn, where the long tail side is, this turning chain counts as one of your stitches. Um, this side does not count, so on this side I would always say all your legs have to land. Um, but on this side, one of your legs is going to be ate up in the turning stitch. So that's one way of doing planned pulling. Um, and the other way that I do, you don't have to do that. So some people don't like it because it can tend to make one side go a bit wider. The side where you do modified puff stitches on the turns. It makes this stitch a little bit bigger. And whenever you put a border on it, um, it actually it looks really, really nice in my opinion. Um, but it can make this side go a little bit wider than this side. This side went off corner because somebody pointed out in my last video on that first stitch I did, I did a double crochet there instead of a single crochet whenever I began my moss stitch. And I didn't even realize that until somebody pointed it out. I was wondering how come this side kind of poked out like it did. And that's why, because I actually messed up my very first stitch in my last video. Thanks to that viewer who pointed that out for me. I really appreciate it and I appreciate all you guys watching and all your comments and all your feedback. Um, it really helps me. It helps me to keep going and doing more videos for you guys. And I really appreciate all my viewers. Thanks for subscribing and liking them and thanks for watching. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do pulling once again. But this time I'm not going to do the modified puff version. All right, in my last video, I believe I used I used an eye hook. I went between an eye hook and my H hook, which I used my other H hook, but this is my favorite H hook. I love this H hook. I wish I had all my hooks in this. Um, it's a clover hook, and I absolutely love it. It just glides right off of the hook part there. All right, so I'm going to go down a size. Um, I'm going to go down to a G and see how that works because I just didn't get quite enough stitches out of each color and you need uh, plenty of stitches in them to do this next uh, this next type of pulling that I'm going to be doing. So here I started with the yellow, the yellow orange. So my pattern is going to look different because um, that's where I started. I didn't catch that one very good. All right. You can start anywhere you want to start. I know a lot of people like to start where I start at, and you can do that if you want to. All right, so it starts on the orange. The orange goes into the yellow here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There's several yellow stitches here. All right, so now I've got orange. I've got orange on my hook, if you can see that. All right, one, two, three. Third stitch. I always go under two because it gives it more of a foundation, more of a base there. It doesn't seem to uh, pull up as bad. So these stitches are a lot smaller than what I did on my other swatch there that I had done. I don't know how this is going to turn out because I haven't done this yet. So I can see I'm going to go into this red. It's going to be muddy. See how it's split? It's a muddy color. I'm going to keep going just because I'm going to see what this is going to do with my other colors. I don't like muddy split legs. 
the um, suggested hook size is an eye hook and that's suggested on the label and usually that tends to work pretty good um, if you follow the label then usually whatever hook size that it says um, it's usually a good one that will pull everyone's tension is going to be a little bit different Sometimes mine is different. Sometimes I crochet tight. Sometimes I crochet more loosely. And this first row is always the most difficult to get into because you have to really take your time to get it into the stitches. So, oh, that one didn't go so well. So it's a single crochet. single crochet there and it's a chain one and you skip one and you go into this next one and this is called the moth stitch also called the linen stitch I think it's also called the no not the bean seed it's also called the seed stitch but the seed stitch goes just a hair different whenever you get to the end of a row um, you don't single crochet and skip you actually do two single crochets into the next two stitches. All right, so yellow, and I turn at the orange. These seem to be doing okay, uh, besides that first stitch that was a little bit muddy. I flip it over. That blue purple is kinda split, so is that one. All right, it's important to know um, how many stitches you're gonna get. So this first row is imperative. So I'm gonna count it as one, two, three. I'm afraid to count it as three orange because what if I don't get three orange? Hang on a second. I'm gonna see how many orange I get this time. So I know exactly how many to count. Since I started with orange, I want to stop just before I go into the orange. But I'm just gonna count these to see all right, so again, it's two orange with a half of an orange that goes into the red. So it's two orange and then it's a split orange. Two red, one, two, kind of a transition into the purple. One, two, three purple and two blue. All right. I'm gonna go with that. Okay, so that's how many stitches I have. All right, so this next row, I'm gonna turn. Since my stitches are really tight, I'm not gonna be able to, did I? All right, I've only chained one, so I gotta chain two to turn. All right, so this next row, my stitches are really tight, so I'm not gonna be able to add a stitch. See, I've got two orange. So that's gonna mean that this is either gonna continue to be split or it's gonna be three red. I have to, since I've got two orange and I'm going into red, I need to have one, two, three that are gonna be red. So, because I need one, two, three, four, five of this grouping. All right, so in my technique, I can either take a stitch away or I can add a stitch. Since I'm crocheting pretty tight, I'm not gonna be able to add another stitch. I'm gonna have to take a stitch away. And in doing that, I wanna do that on either the first row or the third row to get my pulling to go in this direction. To get it to go, whenever you come out of the turn, you can see it, it's gonna be going this way instead of going this way. I know, it goes this way, like some colors go this way, some colors go this way. All right, so 
since I'm going to be taking a stitch away, I'm going to have to do it in either the first row or the third. Let me see. I can actually possibly do it on that corner, but I don't necessarily want to do it on the corner because that um, can be a little bit confusing since I just talked about counting a stitch on the turn. So we don't necessarily want to count a stitch on the turn. I am muddy. Okay, so I've got the reds. Two, one, two. Looks like I've already taken a stitch away. All right, so I had one, two, three, four in this red grouping, two of the transition, and then three purple. But here I only have two purple, so I've actually already taken a stitch away. But in doing it on the second row, it's going to make it start pulling in the opposite direction. How many greens I got? One, two, three green. Here I have two that. No, I have three green. One, two, three green. Two blue. Two blue. And two yellow. All right, so I'm gonna loosen this up just a bit to make that yellow land correctly. Okay, two yellow. One and two. And then I have the two orange that goes into that, into the three red. One, two, orange, chain two. And then I need to get three red. One, two, three. Here, you should start seeing your project begin to pool. And it's not. It's not pooling at all. So, I have done something seriously wrong. My colors are way off somewhere. So, I'm going to take this out. Because it didn't pool at all there. All right, so forget using the G. G didn't work for me. I'm going to go back to the H. Because that was a mess. You know what? I'm going to leave that in the video, too. All right, start again. Sorry if the camera keeps shaking. My cat is jumping on and off the table, which it is anchored to. All right, we're going to get to the orange again. Yeah, that was a complete, total, epic failure. All right. Orange on my hook. One, two, three. Begin the moss stitch. Single crochet, chain one, skip one. Go into the next. All right, so I've got two solid oranges going into the red. You can get a piece of paper and you can write it down. However many that you are getting. Two solid reds. A transition going into the purple. I'm going to count it as a purple stitch. So that's counting this transition color as a purple. One, two, three, four purples. Two orange, two reds, one, two, three, four purples. I believe on my other one I only got one blue. Yeah, and then a transition color into the green, which I'm going to count it as a green. Two 
One, two, three, three green going in, then it goes into the yellow. Loosen it up a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to in my planning here, I'm going to remove a stitch from the blue. So, what that means is instead of I'm sorry, from the purple, there's only one blue stitch from the purple. So instead of getting one transition and three purples, in one of my sequences, I am going to get, there's a total of four here, in one of my sequences, I'm gonna make it loose so I only get three. And I'm going to mark that with a yarn of another color. Hang on a second, let me snip a piece off. I've got some yarn over here. Don't have this ready just yet, so and I just tore that. That's fine. All right, so I'm going to use this. Shows up nicely. All right, snip off a piece of yarn of another color um, that is completely opposite of what you're what you're using, so that it stands out really well. We just have a small tail left over on this one. That's good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, if I do it in either my, in my first row or my third row by removing a color, then it will make my argyle pattern go in the direction that I want it to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do it in the first row because I'm afraid if I go through the second row that whenever I get to my third row, it's not going to, I'm going to have to wind up doing something different. All right, so I'm going to loosen these ones up here. If you're doing multiple sequences, then after you get through like three or four sequences, you can do like your last sequence and you can decide, okay, this is the one that I want to pull a color out of. That way there, you don't have to go back very far. And I'm trying to do this loosely. Okay, so now I have two red, the transition, and then the two purple, and I'm going into my blue here. I'm gonna make it a little bit more looser. I see that I absolutely can do it, but I'm gonna swap to my eye. Go back a little bit further also to um, eat up a little bit more of the color. So as you can see, I still have two solid reds going into my transition. Transition color. And then I only want to get two purples instead of the three. One. And here, actually, is where I'm going to put in my color to mark it. I just kind of stick it in there and crochet over it. And that just marks where I am. Skip one. If you want to wait, um, you can always just kind of feed it through there after you get done crocheting through that. And then the blue. And then I've got three green. I'm going to continue on with my eye because my eye works just as well. I don't have to use the H hook. And it is recommended to use the eye. I was trying to get a few more stitches out of it and I just can't. All right, and then the two yellows. Tighten that up a bit. Chain two, turn, and now I need to get two orange. I only have one orange. And I need two. So I'm going to tighten up these yellows. Tighten it 
tighten up my chain, my turning chain. Sometimes I may only be able to get one stitch in the turning chain. There we go. All right, two reds. And then I'm gonna have a transition of purple. And then I'm going to get three purple. Here I have just the two purple. This is the one where um, I removed a purple stitch to get my argyle pattern to work. But on this side, I still have the three purples. One, two, it's going into the blue. So I need to tighten it up. And if you don't like doing all of the different, um, having to change tension, making it more loose, making it more tighter, um, that's really what pulling is. Pulling is you have to make adjustments to make the pattern fit, to make the colors land where you want them to land. One, two, three green. Yep, I have three green and then I have two yellow. So here we are on the corner. One yellow stitch goes here and the other yellow stitch is gonna go right here. And see, it's working. I have no clue what I did in that first one, but that was a mess. I apologize for that, but it actually made for um, a great teaching moment. By your, th by your third row, you will start to pull. All right, so this is yellow. It's going into the orange here. So I could go ahead and loosen this up. I'm sorry, tighten it up. Where did my G go? Okay. I'm gonna tighten this up a bit and see if I can get a good solid yellow out of that, which makes it muddy on the grain going into it. So that's supposed to be yellow. Err. I don't want it muddy. It's still muddy. Chain two. Yellow on top. And that yellow's muddy too. It's going into the orange there. But we're gonna have to leave it because that's all we can do with it. All right, now we stop and we look. I have two orange right here, and that's exactly where I wanna be. So my first orange on this next row is gonna go right here. So I have yellow here, I'm gonna have orange here, and orange here. So we are shifted over by one. And that's perfect, that's right where we wanna be. And we're already going into the red. I am having more of a difficult time um, with this colorway actually having the colors land and not, you know, and being muddy and stuff. Um, most of my other ones aren't as difficult, but you will find some that are difficult. All right, so here we are. I see that I'm coming up to this white, and that tells me that, okay, I need to approach this more loosely because... I have to get one less stitch. All right, so here is the transition purple. So I know that I'm gonna have one more red stitch and then the next stitch is gonna be transition, and it is. All righty, and there's purple, so I need to get two purples. I'm going to draw this up here One and two. And that is correct. And then blue here. And my blue is going to be right here. All right. And then I'm going to have three green. One, two, three. 
and into the yellow, which I'm going to switch down to my G because I knew that was the problem that I had on the last one. All right, so here it's a little hard to see. I take this part of my hook and I move over my single crochet there. Make sure that I go into where the chain two is because I don't want to split that V. Chain two, turn. Nice and tight because I want it to be all yellow, but it does go into gold. Oh, and you know what I did there too? I don't think I did a single crochet there in between the two. And that's okay because whenever I come back here, I'm just going to go right into there to do a crochet, to do a single crochet. All right, I'm going to keep going. Orange two stitches of orange and as you see as we came out of that turn orange here's orange and here's my orange and that's right where I want to be I'm gonna have I see red here so I'm gonna know I'm gonna have one more orange and then my first red is gonna be right here second red transition purple I'm gonna drop to my G because this is the side where I need to get one transition purple and three purple stitches, so a total of four purples. There's my third purple, fourth purple if you count in the transition. Here's the blue. So my blue stitch will go right here, and that's right where I want it to be. Pulling really, really is very, very simple. Um, once you, once you see it, once you catch it, once you know what you're looking for, then you know what to do. Once it clicked with me, it just absolutely clicked. I hope you guys are um, experiencing that same thing. Okay, so here, this is where I forgot to do a. Um, a chain stitch in between so I'm just gonna go right in between those two flip it over make sure that I don't I'm not splitting a stitch and you can't even tell so it's one two I need three green so I need more green this up a little bit this is a um, the transition blue into the green and it's a little muddy as dark it is as it is though it's gonna be okay I'm making them really tight so I can get in here and get this third green stitch to land right here where I need it to be so then I'm gonna have two yellow what is wrong had a yellow here yellow here so that's two yellow and then two orange oh ah. one blue one two three green one one blue one two three four green okay all right so i didn't need to make those so tight so could you, whenever I made the turn, I'm going to put that back so I can show you my error. Man, I have a lot of errors with this Mexicana. All right, I'm putting it back the way I had it because I want to show you an error that I caught on myself. All right, I had a green here. So now if I do two yellows right here and here, then I'm going to have two orange here and here. So that shifts everything over one too many. You see? And then I'm going to have two orange. So now I've just shifted everything and now I've made it squish. So my two, my two orange are here and then my next two orange are all the way up here. And that's a no-go. So always check whenever you're coming out of your turns so that you can catch um, making sure that you are landing where you're supposed to land at. And what I had done is I miscounted 
I had the one blue and I needed three total green. That includes the transition green. Transition green, two green. Transition green, two green. I was doing transition green, three green. All right, so it's one, two, three. Chain two. Transition green, two green. I start the next one with yellow. So it'll be one yellow, two yellow, and then one orange, my second orange. That's where it needs to be. I hate making mistakes, but it's good whenever, um, I really hate making mistakes on video. It just shows that I'm human too, and pulling is really, um, it's not perfect. You have to stop and check your work and make sure that you're doing it right. I am not a perfect pooler, but making the mistakes that I make hopefully helps you guys to catch your mistakes too. All right, so here we are. This is the section that um, has one less stitch, one less purple. So basically what I do is I, I do the transition and then I do two purple and then it goes into the blue and then it's a blue stitch there. All right. But all I do here is I just pull this up and catch it. It just makes it easier um, to continue with doing it. All right, so blue stitch here means my blue stitch goes here, and then I only have three total green, one transition and two greens. Chain two and two yellow. Typically, I don't have to um, change hook sizes so much either on a project. Usually, I like to do it all with one hook without having to change. But if you have to change, then I mean, that's just what you have to do. Sometimes you'll have that. It can be annoying, especially when if you have a very big project to do. All right, going into my purple, this is the side that um, is my regular purple stitch count. One transition and plus three. It goes into the blue blue stitch three total greens sometimes whenever you have more loose stitches like that um, you also want to make sure that you don't split it on the other side that happens too though so I need one more stitch so I had the purples I had the blue I have the transition green plus two greens. One, two, and then the th that third green goes there. Yellow, yellow, orange, orange. So stop and check your work whenever you come out of the turns. It's where you can make sure Check and see that you haven't missed anything. As I'm approaching this section, I'm starting to crochet a little bit more loosely to eat up a little bit more yarn. So now I'm going a lot more looser here. I'm gonna catch that. Because this is the looser section. And a blue. Transition green, plus two more greens, so it's three greens. It's difficult whenever you have a transition color. Very 
good. Stop and check. So green is here, and then I have two yellows here. So that's good, that's perfect. Oops, sorry, I don't mean to bobble ya. Two orange. And reds. Two reds, and then my total of four purples, the one transition plus the three. And that's what messes up my count is whenever I call it a transition. And then I still think, oh, okay, I got to get three more. Chain two, turn, one green, two green. Perfect. And two yellows. All right, I hope this is, has helped you guys. Um, this is the non-modified puff stitch. Now, whenever um, whenever I get this here, this is going to travel all the way up to the corner, and then it's going to flip over and uh, pick up going whenever it goes back towards that way. Whenever this does get to the corner, you might have to do a modified puff on it um, just to try to eat up some of that yarn. So you can still do that with your pulling um, if you need to do a modified puff stitch to eat up some extra yarn that you might have. Um, you can still do that. And really, one modified puff on a corner is not going to... Um, ruin your project or make it go out of whack or anything like that. So. Alright, blue. So if I can do this quickly, maybe I can get to that to show you what I mean on the turn. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of sloppy work here. I'm just gonna speed crochet through this. So I might have some muddy legs, but I wanna get to that side so I can show you what I'm talking about if I have enough time um, in, this, in this video to do that. And this is usually how fast I go whenever I'm doing a project. And yes, you can look that quickly and see your stitches on where they need to be. Because as I'm doing this, I am checking my stitches as I go. And I am just, I'm only going to get one yellow out of this because the gold, the orange seems to be really long. So I'm going to make sure that I get three of that orange and I did. Alrighty. Yep. So I'm coming to the whites, more loose. I can get through two skeins in a day. Of pulling. Um, sometimes I only get through one, one and a half skeins. So I could do a project fairly quickly. <laughs> but you know, there are just times where you just have to set it down and take a break. All right, so yes, I am speeding through this because I want to show you how I do the turn whenever that section comes to the turn. I 
adjust my tension as I go. Oh, here we go again. So that I don't have to swap hooks, haha. -ha. I'm gonna try and get two yellows out of this because this one is being a pickle, but it's not, it's going straight into the orange. So I'm getting one, now I'm only getting one yellow and one that's really a transition into the orange. All right, the two reds into the transition of the purple. I'm going to, and I pull this up as I go. This one, I grabbed a kind of a, a thick thread, a thick yarn. Typically I don't grab one so thick, but it's what I had laying right by me, so that's what that's what I grabbed. And I just pull it along with me as I as I travel up. Alright, and I am checking as I go. See how nice that looks. I love pulling. I think it looks great. And this side is the side that has the regular four purples. Everywhere else in my project, if this was a multiple sequence one, every other sequence would be regular and have four stitches of the purple in it. It would only be the sequence that you come to that has your marker on it. Will it be one less purple? And I'm going to have to tighten. I really do love this hook. It just glides like silk. Muddy. But it's an orange and I still have two reds. Okay. More loosely here, starting to come up to the turn. So this purple here still counts of the one that's just before it. Here's my blue, and here's where my blue is going to be. That's perfect. All right, greens. I'm speeding through this because I want you to see how I do the turn. One, two, I need one more orange and it's really muddy into the red. For time's sake, I'm going to continue on. I would go back and fix that and I would make it not so muddy, but time restraints. I'm continuing on. Blue. I'm just looking at how blue both of these stitches are. Alright, and as long as my greens come out okay, then I'm okay with it. It's kind of like the way that my yellow did. My yellow shrunk and my orange got longer. It looks like my blue got a bit longer also. And you're going to find your, that you can have that in some dye lots. They just go a little bit wacky. And they're not perfect. 
All right, two reds, because that's where I am. All right, now I'm coming to this corner. All right, so I'm gonna have my transition purple here. Chain two, turn. I'm gonna pull this on over and I'm gonna pull it around. And this is gonna go right here, just like so. And this one goes here. And then I have my blue here and my three greens. And you could just work this through here like so. I was gonna go ahead and just pull it through like I normally do, but in case that confuses some people, you can do it that way as well. See how it um, just goes right, feeds right on over to the next one. And I didn't have to do a modified puff there because it went into my blue correctly. So I used up enough yarn there. If you had too much yarn on that turn, and if it was not gonna go into your next color correctly, you could still do a modified puff there to eat up some of your um, excess yarn. All right, see how nice and pretty that green is going right where it needs to be. Too yellow if possible with this eye hook. And it is, looks like I'm starting to get more yellow again. As long as you count the section Let's see, if I have two yellow and two orange, but then I was only gonna get one yellow, so then I had to get three orange. That happened with a bigger project of mine. It was a beautiful Afghan baby, baby blanket, and it was just gorgeous colors. It was blue, uh, dark blue, light blue, gray and white. And um, through the project, the, the colors, went off and I was so upset about that but once whenever the project was completed and finished you couldn't tell because I made sure that say I had four blue and three gray well then I wound up with two blue and like six gray it was it was just insane but by the time that it was all done with as long as I kept the um, like the four and two count the same total of six then it was all okay and it came out good. It was beautiful. And the person that it went to was very happy and very pleased with it. All right, so I hope that helps you guys on those corners and those turns. And um, pulling one out to make it pull correctly. This is the, um, what do I call it? There's the modified puff version, and then there's the alternate method. So this is the alternate method. You just gotta make sure that your colors go where they need to go. So blue is here. I still got a little bit of purple going on here, but it's gonna go into blue. And then that is gonna go into green, but now I have extra blue there. Let me see if my greens are gonna land right, because if they're not, then I'm gonna have to frog that back and um, eat up a little bit more of that yarn. That's what I'm gonna do too. So I hope this helps. Um, I really enjoy doing it. You can pull that out that way there so that now it's just gonna going to continue and trail up this way with your project as you go. I'm gonna have to eat up more. No, I've got one more. This is blue, so I need another purple here. And now I'm onto the blue. Good, good, good. So I loosen that up a lot, so these are a lot more loose. Really, really loose, as you can see. So whenever you're, you get back to a section that's really loose like that, you want to make sure that you don't split the V on the back side. Because that can happen very easily. I think I've done it in one of my videos, in fact. Alright guys, so um, that is that. I hope that helps. If you have questions, please let me know. Um, please subscribe to my videos, it really helps. 
out with uh, me to continue making these videos and builds my fan base and I love it. Um, I love all the comments. I love all the feedback that you guys give. All right, so there is, here is the, the non-modified puff version and here is the modified puff version. And I pulled on this one a bit to get it to look straight. And this one here is tight because I just did it. Pull it out and you can see it's, it's roughly the same. It's about the same width. And the patterns are a little bit different because I started in different places. So here I started with the blue and on here I started with the orange. All right, guys, um, I hope that helps, and uh, God bless. You guys have a great day, and happy pooling to all of you.